Hey, it's Jared. I just got back from a unique experience getting to test out a new drone from Hover Air. In a recent video, I did a review of the Hover Air X1, a fantastic drone that's designed to be essentially a flying selfie camera. Now, we're used to drones with controls that we can do all sorts of things with, and they're a bit more involved. The Hover Air drone is basically a flying selfie stick. And so no need to hold a selfie stick. You just simply deploy the drone from your hand and it does all the things and captures all the stuff. However, with the X1, it just didn't provide very high quality video. It was a fun drone. I dare call it a toy. It was kind of a toy. It was like teetering between something that was super useful for capturing footage and photos and all that stuff. But it was, it did kind of feel like a toy but I got the opportunity to spend time with the Hover Air X1 Pro and Pro Max. Yes, they are using a naming structure very similar to a lot of other companies like iPhones and all that good stuff. But I have to say, I think that they have really landed on something with these drones. And at the time that I'm releasing these videos, they are becoming available. And so I just wanted to share all of this with you because this is something that's unique. When you want to capture something, whether it's of you or you in a group or whatever, somebody always has to become the camera. They either have to use a selfie stick and extend a thing out and you know, then you're that guy or gal with the selfie stick or you're not in the shot because you're running the camera or maybe you're just by your yourself and you want to capture, but it's it's a challenge. This is the answer for that. You simply throw the drone up and it can follow you. It can orbit you. It can zoom out and zoom in. It can do a bird's eye view. There are so many different modes that this drone will capture for you. And the new drones are coming with a 4K and an 8K option. So let's go through some of what I got to experience this week at this Hover Air event. There was about a dozen of us other creators that were there and we got to play with these drones. I'm making this video because I want to, not because they requested it. This is not at their request. I simply am excited to have something that I can use that will capture footage that will fit into the quality of material that I want to be producing. They have the Hover Air Pro and Pro Max and an additional product line that's coming. And so let's talk a little bit about specs first. First of all, they're going to have the three drones. We've got the X1, the Pro, and the Pro Max. They are all under 200 grams with the Pro Max being 192.5 grams. That means that this drone does not have to be registered with the FAA. You don't have to have a Part 107 license to fly it. However, if you do want to use it commercially, it doesn't matter if it's below the 250. You still do need to have a Part 107 license in order to fly it commercially. But this drone is not going to have to be registered because it's under the 250 gram limit. The design, the design is very human, is that it folds up into something that is pocketable. The two new drones are bigger than the original X1 that I have here, but it still very much will fit in my back pocket. And so I could deploy this drone, I could fold it up, put it right back in my back pocket. And the battery life is going to be extended. There is not only onboard storage, but there's expandable. We're going to talk about those things. So the most exciting thing for me is the runtime and the resolution of the image. And so let's look at video resolution. The Pro is going to be able to shoot 4K up to 60p. So you can see that there with the Pro Max being able to go 4K 120. So really being able to get that slow motion. So if you are into sports, if you are a runner or a cyclist or any of those things, and you've wanted to capture yourself doing whatever sport it is, this is going to be the drone for you, not the X1, but probably the Pro or the Pro Max, because it's going to capture that higher resolution. And it's also going to have a faster frame rate for being able to do slow motion. And the speed in which it travels is also going to be greater, too. So you can see the slow motion. We have 1080, 120 frames at 1080 for the Pro. And then we have that as well as 4K 120 for the Pro Max. We've got bigger batteries on the Pro and the Pro Max, which is going to give us longer runtime. We also have a wider angle field of view. 
and we still have smooth capture, so like a video stabilization, but it's an additional higher version, so smooth capture 2.0, and there's now two axis gimbals with EIS as well. So there's gonna be additional stability. And in some of the video that I'm showing you right now that we filmed at this event, I think you could tell that there's some good stabilization taking place here with this. We also have obstacle avoidance detection, which the drone did not have before. This is a very safe to fly drone because it's got prop guards all the way around it and it didn't go that fast. And so if it ran into something and even fell to the ground, it didn't hurt the drone. Like my drone's done that, the X1 has done that, it's fallen and all that stuff. But the new versions are gonna have obstacle avoidance and the Pro Max has a rear vision based camera as well to add even additional protection there against running into things. But as far as follow speeds, like these are in kilometers per hour and I don't do the whole math between miles per hour and kilometer, Pro and the Pro Max are significantly faster, almost double the speed of this little guy. And as far as how fast it's able to ramp up speed as well, and even instantaneous tracking speed, which means a burst speed to catch up, up to 60 kilometers per hour, which is pretty darn good. And I found that this did a pretty good job at keeping up with me. But when I was running around and having the Pro Max chase me, I never felt like I could get away from it. It's definitely gonna be fast enough to keep up with us. We have 16 minutes of runtime on both of these as well, and they're still gonna have kind of the same battery type that pops out, so we'll be able to replace the batteries really easily. There's also a charging dock that we'll talk about here in a second that gives you, I think, up to like 54 minutes of runtime between being able to dock this and charge it up, top it off, and pull it back out. It's definitely a neat accessory. I have to say, like, the expansion on this drone is what's really gonna make it useful for me and I think a lot of other people who really wanna capture neat stuff. They had a video that they showed us, some snowboarders that they took up, and skiers, and it was actually pretty decent footage. I felt like it was getting really close to what we expect out of our action cameras, whether it's a GoPro or an Action 4 from DJI. I think that it's getting really close. I could tell with some of the processing in the image and the saturation of colors and stuff like that, it might not yet be on par with what we would get out of one of these action cameras, but it's getting really close. And I think that the footage quality is gonna be represented there as I'm able to actually take one and go and do different things with it. And I'm hoping to get my hands on one relatively soon. So the power case is that expansion unit. You can actually slide the drone down into it. It works for both the Pro and the Pro Max. And you close this thing almost like an old cassette deck and it charges up the drone and it also keeps the drone deploy ready. So what was cool about this is if you need to be in a hurry, you gotta fold the drone out, you gotta power it up, you got to get to the right mode, you have to launch it. It takes like about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes to go through that entire process. But if it's in the power case, it's ready to go. You just pop it out and it's ready to go. There's no powering it up. It's already dialed in and ready to launch. And so the power case is more than just charging it. It's auto sleep and instant awake, as it mentions there. So if you need to be able to deploy this thing quickly, this charging case comes with a strap. You can wear it around your shoulder, and then you just pop the drone out and you're ready to deploy it at any time. And so there's value in the power case beyond just being able to charge it. If there wasn't, then yeah, we'll just plug into a USB power brick and charge it that way. But I see the power case as being something super useful, especially for those who wanna be able to deploy their Hover Air Pro or Pro Max pretty quickly. And then the new batteries are also rated to work in colder climates, which is great as well. We also have a joystick and a single-handed and a two-handed joystick that's coming as well. And what that is gonna allow the Hover Pro and Pro Max to do is be controlled like a regular drone. So you can do that one-handed with kind of more of a single joystick one-handed with the viewing monitor, or you can add an additional one with the viewing monitor and actually fly it around. That's kind of neat. I don't know if I'll be using that too much to control the drone around, but I most definitely will be using is the display. The display is going to allow me and anybody else out there to see what's going on with the drone. Is it still following me behind? Instead of looking back and maybe ruining my shot that I was trying to get, I could just look at the little display and I could have that mounted on the handlebars of my bike. It also acts as a beacon as well. And so the drone will do a better job of 
following you and not getting distracted by other things because that acts as a beacon. And so I mean, they're really adding in some cool stuff that makes this super useful. I'm starting to think about what the Skydio drone was known for. The Skydio drone had a beacon and it was designed to follow you. Yes, you can control it, but it was really designed to be fully autonomous. And that's what the Hover Air is and the Hover Air Pro and Pro Max. We also have a multi-function carrying bag as well, just to kind of carry all of this stuff with us. There's some ND filters, a charging hub and stuff like that coming as well. So I just have to say, like when it comes to tools that makes our jobs easier as a creator, or even just in capturing those everyday moments, moments, we want tools that get out of our way and do their job and don't become a hassle to use. And I think what Hover Air is doing with these different products that they're coming out is they're diversifying a little bit, having entry level stuff for, you know, just for fun, take it out, get some shots, don't have really too high of expectations, but it's a small pocketable drone that can get some quick shots and it's great. But then for those of us that want something a little bit better and want some more flexibility and some more power, then there's the Pro and the Pro Max that's gonna get us there with better battery life, better resolution, and uh, some other features that would be useful, especially if we're gonna be flying in situations where the drone could be more at danger because of trees and just different things that are around, hence the obstacle avoidance and all that stuff. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I'm thankful that they invited me to come out and spend some time testing and playing with the drone and getting to ask all the questions. I think that it's really neat that brands do that, especially when they don't give us as creators any expectations of having to put out a video or talk kindly about things or whatever. There's no repercussions regardless of what I have to say. I'm impressed with what I see so far. And of course I'll be coming back and doing a full review where we'll go out and test it in a lot of different ways and see if it holds up to the experience that I had getting to play with it pre-release. Hopefully that all translates well. But you can actually pre-order the Pro and the Pro Max right now through Indiegogo, and then they'll be readily available after that. So if you're wanting to pick one up, check out the link in the description and make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can be notified when I put out my full review. I'll definitely be doing that after I get my hands on one that I can use myself. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back in another one soon. Take care.